Um, and so I'm interested in like what role has the regional position of Vietnam played uh, in some of this uh, knowledge transfer. So in, in terms of, um, Jonas, I'll come to you, in terms of business models that we're seeing, I mean, obviously I think we know, but we talk about Singapore, Thailand and, and Vietnam as like sort of a golden triangle, but outside of that as well, like what are some of the uh, startups that, has start, that came up and have really done well in Vietnam? Have they picked up from regional markets? Have they have founders learned from regional markets in Southeast Asia? Um, and if so, what is that? What is that symbiotic relationship been like? Because uh, you know, unlike Pakistan, which is which is not necessarily not Southeast Asia, the Southeast Asia ecosystem is thriving quite a bit, and there's a lot of diversity. But there's a lot to learn from each other as well. What has been the experience, in your opinion, on the Vietnam side as being part of that start, Southeast Asian startup ecosystem, and and how has it uh, impacted the way Vietnam's own uh, uh, economy and, and startup space has developed. Yeah, um, it, it's a tough question because, of course, everybody has a different experience. But one thing that I would say is when I first moved to Singapore uh, in 2008, I was pitched that Singapore is a gateway to Southeast Asia and it's kind of um, the hub and everything kind of radiates out from Singapore. Of course, I was young, uh, maybe back then um, it already was a lie um, and it was just what they were telling me, but at least today, I definitely don't think that this statement is true anymore. Um, I actually rather see uh, each of these ecosystems developing by themselves, um, whether it is Vietnam, whether it is Indonesia, whether it is Thailand, whether it is Malaysia, Philippines, because all of them are growth stories and there is so much domestic opportunity. Mm -hmm. It is not necessarily the case that Unines uh, from day one on would be going regional. Um, and I would argue, actually, if, if I look at, at Vietnam, there are relatively few companies which actually have gone regional out of Vietnam um, relatively early because there is so much opportunity domestic. So looking at the, the companies that, that Valerie was mentioning earlier on, Momo, is a pure Vietnam play. VNPay is a pure Vietnam play. You could argue VNG, which is a Vina gain, started as a gaming company, um, has the largest messenger app in the, the country with Zalo. They have a strong gaming business in emerging markets all around the world, but actually this is not limited to Southeast Asia. This is very huge in, in Brazil and a couple of, couple of other emerging markets. Um, so I'm not, I think the idea that maybe 10 years ago often was pitched as Southeast Asia is whatever 600 million people or whatever number you use, um, and it's the equivalent to the EU or to the US as a block. I'm not quite sure whether that is in today's world true. I would argue one of the reasons why I could pull the trigger on Baikia, for example, in Pakistan, was I had seen in Saigon, in Jakarta, what these businesses were doing, and people couldn't see that from the US or from Europe because they, they weren't in these markets, but in some ways, Karachi and Saigon is more similar than some of the cities in Southeast Asia amongst itself, and even the strata of society. Mm -hmm. The high end of the rich people in Saigon and Karachi are similar to the, uh, more similar than the rich people in Saigon and the poor people in their experienced lives. So I, I really think we are living in a much more diverse and not a uh, much more granular world nowadays than having this kind of big regional block uh, thinking.